What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here, and welcome back to episode 32. This time around, we're going to be tackling Castle Redmain. And in addition to that, I've actually reverted to a previous cloud save so that we can do this area on patch 1.03. Now, obviously, more patches may roll out in the future, uh, but because Horfrost Stomp was nerfed and that was a key component of this build, I didn't want to do the Radon boss fight while having access to that as a tool. Uh, a couple other things in terms of what we're doing that the patch impacted that are worth noticing. The Great Turtle Shell is not 100 physical negation anymore. It's still great to have on our back because of the stamina recovery speed, but we're also going to pull out a tower shield. It doesn't matter if it's mana or if it's the, the, the golden beast one. Just having a, a great shield that has high guard boost and 100 physical negation, we can put barricade on it, and that's going to help in certain instances. So we're going to also have one of those on deck. Uh, while Horfrost has been nerfed, Carry and Retaliation is actually super, super strong now, especially when your item is upgraded, so we're going to be aiming to upgrade this shield in the future as well. Uh, and while you don't have Horfrost for the AoE clear, there are lots and lots and lots of other Ashes of War that are useful. So briefly, just to talk about this, um, there's actually one that we get in Redmain Castle that I'll probably be playing with for a while, but some other good considerations if you're running the Knight Rider, Giant Hunt, absolutely fantastic Ash of War. Uh, this is going to do an incredible amount of poise damage. It'll break great shields. Uh, it'll stagger larger enemies. Super fun. Uh, Storm Assault, a little bit of a wind-up, but also a really fun, cool move to use. You could use, uh, where are they at? There we go, Sword Dance. This, especially if you have status, you know, Bleed or Frost or something, this is an incredibly potent ability that quickly does three attacks. Uh, I'm going to be working with Giant Hunt because I haven't used that one all that much, but any of those are good. I mean, if we picked up Cragblade in a previous episode, I believe we calculated this out as a 25% physical damage increase. So I know Horfrost, I mean, and Horfrost is still here. You can still use it. We can't just spam it like we used to, so it's not nearly as strong as it used to be, but it is still an option. Uh, either way, we're going Giant Hunt, and since we don't have frost on anymore we're actually going to be making our thing cold now as you'll see cold gets b scaling and strength obviously we have plenty of strength being a quality build so we're still getting pretty high ar on this in fact high enough that if we go on over to our weapons you can see that if i make this quality it's going to be 390 whereas if i make this cold it's going to be 437 now because the attack power is now split between magic and physical on this i won't be able to put blood flame blade on it anymore but I will be able to get Frostbite procs, which of course is very nice. And on top of that, Giant Hunt is a solid art in and of itself. Uh, so anyway, now before we jump into Redmain, it occurred to me that quite a few of you may have already triggered Radon by accident. And if that is the case, this castle is going to be completely empty. So even though I'm a little bit farther in the preparation at this point, I decided it would be good to record this after the fact and edit it into the video. Uh, if this teleporter is active, it means Radon has already been triggered. And if that's the case, you can't go through this area for the time being. There's a little bit different approach that you're going to have to do, and that's going to involve defeating Radon. So you're just going to make your way on up into the castle the same way you would just following this video. Uh, but when you get on over to here, to the castle plaza, of course, this is already going to be triggered with the festival. Um, now, all the enemies you fight over here, the boss fight that's in that area, you're going to have to beat Radon before you are able to do any of that stuff. So, Radon is in the episode right after this. After you have defeated him, you can warp back here. And over here is Jaren. You need to run on over, talk to him. He's going to talk about how you gave Radon an honorable death. He's no longer bound to the fortress. He says, you know, maybe we meet again. And at that point, you're all set. So after doing that, if you warp back to the Impassable Great Bridge, you should now be able to go through this area in full. Um, the teleporters are going to remain active, but all of the doors and whatnot in the castle should have spawned. You should be able to get all the loot that's obtained within, and there should be a boss fight here that you can now do. So you're going to need to do that to get to your Ruins Greatsword if you already triggered Radon. With all that being said, first up, we got the bridge. Now, there are going to be ballistas that are shooting at you a bunch, and as you see them, you just kind of want to serpentine. So, you can see that one's coming over. We'll move over this way. And as long as you're keeping an eye on where the ballistas are coming from and serpentining to address that, you should be able to get across the bridge without being hit. Even if you get knocked off your horse, it shouldn't be that bad. You should still be able to get over here pretty quickly. And we're going to rush straight up behind this tower so that we are not being shot by that archer whatsoever.
That's giant hunt. How nice is that? Just, oh, you have a great shield? I have a massive halberd that's gonna poke you from beneath. Another fun fact with this, it's actually really, really effective at roll catching in PvP, but personally, I prefer sword dance in PvP. Uh, so, anyway, back of the tower path, smithing three. There we go. You can see we're getting frost pretty fast, roughly three swings of this. Uh, sword dance would get frost off almost instantly, and I did actually consider using that, um, but I think that would be better if I have bleed on the weapon, and... That would mean going to Bloody Slash, and I don't really like Bloody Slash. Once we get the Occult Wet Blade, we can do that. We don't have that just yet. Uh, so now we're just going to kind of circle up here. There's a couple enemies. You can see they're shooting stuff. Explosive Ballista Guy. That's the only real thing you got to worry about right here. Once you get past that, go ahead and fight these guys if you want. Real quickly, I want to point out the differences between the shields I have, because I have mixed things up a little bit there. Uh, so with the Great Turtle Shell, I've gone ahead and removed Barricade from that, and I've put no skill on this. And the benefit of having no skill on a shield means if I hit L2, I'm immediately going to go into that ability instead of doing anything with the shield. So I can have the shield out to block and still do an ability. Of course, the Spiral Horn we still carry in Retaliation, and then as I mentioned, Barricade is now in the Great Shield, which will give that a tremendous amount of guard boost. And that's going to be really useful in a couple instances, uh, especially if we are up against a boss where the boss is going to be doing like a big flurry of attacks and we just want to shut everything down. That will really come in in a big way at that point. So we're going to head over here. A uh, giant is going to jump down, excuse me, a troll. You can just run past him. He doesn't matter. Instead, we're going to head on over to this tower right here. Just jump over. Scare the guy that was shooting arrows at you, and then you can descend for a quick piece of loot. I'm actually really curious to see how these new moves work against Radon. Because we only took two attempts on him in the previous recording. Um, first attempt got really close, but I got hit by a massive rock that killed me. And then the, uh, the second attempt... He just got beat down, but a large part of it was Horfrost Stomp, so I was like, well, given that that's been nerfed. Uh, right here, we want to do a run and jump, just to make sure we clear that. And the other thing, I haven't really talked about Great Shields. Uh, great Shields are incredibly powerful in this game, just to kind of show, because pretty much anything is going to bounce off of it. And so if you want to do the guard counters, you're going to see a lot more attacks bounce and then you'll be able to come out and get that guard counter hit. And if you know, if you really like the, the Halberd and Great Shield style of play, you know, keep in mind, the whole point of a quality build is for us to find something that we really like. So, you know, right now, if I was to go and respec, I have B strength while this is cold. This obviously only scales with strength. I could take 35 points out of dexterity uh, and get my strength significantly higher and be in a much, much better spot just transitioning to a strength build at this point. So. You know, the point is, that's that's the whole thing with the quality build. Like, we started off quality because it gives us the weapon flexibility, and we can stay quality. Um, pretty soon we'll have access to, like, a plus seven, so I'll probably be using Bloodhound, uh, Bloodhound Fang again, but, you know. I just want to make sure people aren't like, well, why am I staying quality? Run and jump that gap. It's, it's embarrassing how many times I've fallen off of that. Uh, get the shiny first. This actually has the new Ash of War that I want to play with. Fight. All right, so we got flaming strike. Uh, of course, that one harpy. Where did she go? That that uh, siren that we killed. She should drop a rune nine. I think we may have just picked it up. It's kind of an autopilot there for a second. Then we get these smoldering butterflies right here, and then we go up the tall ladder. 
As a general rule of thumb, every time you kill one of those harpies in a later game area like this, they're always going to drop a rune 9 on the first kill. You can't farm them for infinite rune 9s, but, you know, rune 9s, that's a, that's a nice chunk of souls. So it's definitely worth taking them out, even if they're annoying. So we got three knights up top, and then a flame enchanted knight that we're going to have to take out. Almost. Should be able to go straight through this. And this is a this is a good example of like the respec. Right now you can see I'm just barely, ever so slightly, not getting these kills in one poke. Uh, if I drop points out of decks and went to strength, these would all be single pokes. I would just be, you know, dead, 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 dead. Ooh, bad spacing there. It's okay. I got let me heal up. Giant hunt. Okay, so we killed him up the tall ladder. Uh, we're gonna go down this ladder for a dog, and then inside for a bunch of weak enemies, as well as a shortcut. Where's the dog at? There it is. You can see this whole area is filled with these dudes. Make sure to pick up the cookbook. this up in the event that we die. It's a nice little shortcut right here. That's that ladder we went up, so we can come right through here instead. I mean, it doesn't save us a ton of time, but it does save a little bit. Right, so in here, we're going to have one of those page guys, the dudes with the rapier and the crossbow. And the great shield should hard counter this guy pretty hard, because he's going to bounce off every time. There's a health thing, that's what's making all that noise. Um, but we, we're going to do is use this doorway to make these beasts a little easier to fight. We're just gonna scoot back. They're gonna come right on over here. And this should actually be fantastic for Giant Hunt. We'll come into the door. If you're a caster, once they get in front of the door, you can basically just kinda sit here and cast and you'll be able to take them out. If you're a melee build, you can do that. It's not staying in the door very well, so I might just... So this is what I did not want. This is the whole reason I recommend the door, because if both aggro, then things get a little bit, little bit tricky. Giant hunt. Let's get him again. You know, one of the funny thing, this is probably the hardest part of this area. I would say trying to take on both of these beasts is going to be harder than the actual boss that we need to fight. One at a time, they're not a problem. It's just with both of them jumping all over you. 
And obviously, you know, having to use up heals, like I said, not going to be a concern because we got our Red Scarab right over here. I'll pop him off. That'll get us a bunch of flasks back. Uh, let's see. We're going to grab the Smithing 4 that's over by the bodies over here. And then we need to... I believe this is the crate room. Crate room. Then we go up the scaffolding for room 6. Grab that. Head out this way. And now we're kind of going back to where we came from. You can see we came down that ladder. We're going to just go up here on the scaffolding real fast. Just grab something. Oh, another change that's that's interesting. Um, so we got the Battle Hammer in a previous episode. It's not bad. I used it for most of the Let's Play. Uh, instead of that, though, the Battle Hammer has been replaced, and you are retroactively given Banished Knight Engvil. So I actually tested this guy. He's not too bad. He's very, very tanky, honestly. I think he's tankier than Lutel is. Uh, his damage is pretty solid, so if you're looking for, like, a upfront kind of melee bro as your summon, he's definitely not a bad choice. He's not going to do insane amounts of damage, but the dude has a, a very respectable amount of stagger. Uh, so next we're going to head this way, just through these barricades. Frosty. I'm going to head on up. There's more barricade stuff over there, but first we're just going to turn and go up here. There's actually a grace right that way. If you're like really desperate for one, you can run, but I think it's worth just going up here and getting this done first. Uh, where did it go? I'm missing my... There it is. Like ladder blind. We're gonna go in here. There's a pumpkin head up top, the flamberge, rune three, and then a smithing five. Oh, man. I'll tell you what, I'm... Definitely liking how hard that hits. That is that's quite nice. Got the Flamberge, which is if you're looking for a new greatsword, definitely a solid choice. Good reach, has built-in bleed. Um, it's just all around good weapon. Flamberge has been good for a long time. Smithing stone, and then we go all the way up here and we'll get another one. Smithing five. Actually, I think after we're done this area. Yes, I think I'm one smithing five short of us upgrading our weapon again before the boss, so I might swing out somewhere to grab one of those. Uh, do not drop down that way. Take the ladder back down. It's a gravity fall. Yeah, we are one short. Should be good. Might as well get as many upgrades as possible for the boss. And obviously, you know, at this point, many of you are going to be running a plus 10 weapon already from following that. You know, most people probably are, but maybe there's some people that just don't want to use a unique weapon. and you know, they want something like this, so... That is why I'm still working with it. Ow! Okay, well, we can take the long route. Just go around like this. And then roll. We're gonna all aggro, but that's that's fine. It's not a concern. Let's run on in here, hit the grace. I should be fine with five flasks. Well, no, no, I'd like to have some blue flasks, so we can just rest. I think we have enough that we can get a, um, grab a level as well. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna go strength for the time being since I'm using cold on this. I'll probably respec in the, the near future anyway. Yeah, look at that, just, just that one additional point of strength.
Okay, up here we have this. Now there's going to be a Iron Maiden that will run you down. Honestly, I would just ignore this guy. These things are a pain in the ass to kill to begin with. If you want to fight it, you can be a little cheeky and fight it from the door right here. Uh, we want to come in here. Red Hot Wet Blade. That is going to let us enchant our weapon with either Fire or Flame Art. Yeah, this thing can actually hit you through the door too. I would just leave it. I mean, they're not even really worth uh, a ton of runes. Okay, we're up top. We'll go this way. This is actually like a, a good little bit through the castle. The only thing we get out of this at the end. Uh, smithing six in the chest once we get to the very end of it. This is what a nice shield boost shield with a 100% physical can do for you. And we haven't even used barricade yet, but that's more going to be for the boss. The boss decides to do some crazy stuff. We'll be able to barricade with this. Should allow us to tank. Um, probably, I don't, I don't know. I'm actually curious. I think we may be able to tank some of the crazier stuff that the boss does. Dude, that's using barricade there. Which barricade actually got a nerf. They decreased the duration of it and increase the cost, but you're supposed to use it like that. You know, you, you pop it at the moment that an enemy is going to attack to force them to bounce. Uh, but after we get that six, we're going to head over here back to the chamber outside the plaza. And now it is time for a double boss battle. Uh, so this boss fight is, it's basically a DPS race uh, to a certain extent. I'd suggest having a parry shield and hopefully you're good at parrying, it's gonna help greatly. But we need to fight a uh, misbegotten champion, and then we also need to fight a crucible knight. If you can kill the misbegotten before the crucible knight spawns, that's gonna be ideal. Um, you can parry both of them. I'm not sure on the parry timing on the misbegotten, he's a little too wild for me, but uh, you know, you, you should be fine to, to handle this out. Let me, um, don't wanna do the skellies. And how much, how much are you? Maybe I can plot the new guy just to show him off. 100, oh my god. What do I have? I have 84 FP. Let's, let's pull out Stormhawk. I'm pretty sure Stormhawk actually like buffs me. Hang on a second, where my skellies go? We're gonna be getting new summons soon anyway. I just need the Stormhawk to be a brief distraction while I kill this guy, and then I can focus on uh, other dude. See, not that hard at all. All right, my turn. Let's go. Sit down. I've learned the forbidden technique of parrying these. Ow! I shouldn't. Talk! Oh man, as soon as I started talking shit, it happens. There we go, that's more like it. Should have brought the parry dagger along. Oh, the dagger, the uh. There's a dagger that has, like, extra critical. Come and get it. Come on. Come on. Oh my god! This man is being clowned on right now.
Oh, wow. That almost got me killed. All right, no more joking around. Let's go. Oh, no. Not the shield. Not the shield. Ah, just kidding. Sit your ass down. There we go. Had it all along. Oh, my God, the outplay. How many times must I teach you this lesson, old man? Now, personally, I really like small shields for this. The buckler has better parry frames, but I just can't seem to... I can never... Uh, I can't just... I don't know. I'm just not good with the buckler. The more I play, the more I realize I'm just not good with the buckler. Medium shields have similar frames here to the small. Small is a little bit better. Uh, but anyway, accomplishing this will get you the Ruin's Greatsword, which not only is one of the legendary armaments, but one of the best strength weapons in the game. Gotta have 16 int for it. But this thing does a massive, massive weapon art that just unleashes devastation. Which actually, if I have the int thing, I don't. Oh no, hang on. I can. I want to show this to y'all. Because my strength gang, I would recommend it. It's pretty good. So very heavy, but check this thing out. Yeah, that's that's good. That's very good. Like honestly, I think it is. It's you know, in terms of all the strength weapons, easily top five. Um, super, super strong weapon, and that weapon art is going to be fantastic all around. But so with this done, um, we can go over this way. You'll notice that this area is all nice and quiet, and that's because we need to trigger the Festival of Radon, which has not started up yet. Uh, so from here, we are going to be talking to Ronnie. You remember I kept kept y'all away from that, you know, held, held off and held off and held off. And the main reason I held off is because I wanted to go through this area first in particular. One, because strength builds get access to Rune's Greatsword, which is just an absolutely fantastic weapon to have and one that can carry you up to the end of the game. Uh, fun fact, Wave of Destruction, that's physical damage too. So that's going to do a ton of damage, doesn't matter. Um, on top of that, we got the Red Hot Whetstone, we got a couple more upgrade mats, so just a lot of different things that are going to better prepare us for the Radon battle. But in the next episode, we're going to be talking to Ronnie, going through her quest line. Uh, I wouldn't suggest just going off on your own because there's a lot of different NPCs we got to talk to. If you want to kind of wander and try and figure it out, be my guest. But, you know, that's that's not my recommendation. Uh, either way, for now, we're going to wrap up. I am going to probably go upgrade my stuff. Uh, in the next episode, we'll go talk to Ronnie.